The salty breeze carried the scent of decay as Cornelius Wraith's small boat approached the mist-shrouded shores of Morbus Island. Once a quarantine zone for plague victims, the island had long been abandoned by the living, its crumbling structures now home only to whispers of the past and the restless dead. Cornelius, a necromancer of growing renown, had spent years searching for this forsaken place, drawn by rumours of its dark history and the potential power that lingered in its soil. As he stepped onto the pebbled beach, his boots crunching on sun-bleached bones, a shiver of anticipation ran down his spine. Cornelius's companions, Ophelia Whisperwind and Ivy Silverthorn, disembarked behind him, their faces a mix of trepidation and morbid curiosity. Ophelia, an ethereal presence with eyes that seemed to peer into other realms, carried an ornate wooden box containing their arcane tools. Ivy, her fingers stained with the juices of rare herbs, clutched a tome of forbidden knowledge close to her chest. The trio had bonded over their shared fascination with the thin veil between life and death, each bringing their unique skills to this daring expedition. As they made their way inland, the island revealed its secrets slowly. Dilapidated quarantine wards loomed out of the mist, their windows dark and accusing. Overgrown mass graves dotted the landscape, marked by tilting stone obelisks etched with faded names and dates. The very air seemed thick with the echoes of suffering and the lingering miasma of plague. Cornelius felt a surge of excitement. This was the perfect laboratory for his most ambitious experiment yet to harness the collective power of thousands of departed souls. The group's destination was the island's central structure, a imposing stone edifice that had once served as both hospital and morgue. Its spires reached toward the grey sky like grasping fingers, and as they approached, Cornelius could swear he heard faint whispers emanating from within its walls. He shared a knowing look with Ophelia and Ivy. They too could sense the latent energy surrounding them, the potential waiting to be unlocked. Years of study and preparation had led them to this moment, and the weight of their impending task hung heavy in the air. As night fell, casting long shadows across the island, Cornelius began the preparations for the ritual. Chalk lines were drawn on the cracked marble floor of the old morgue, candles were lit, and ancient words were chanted in languages long dead to the world of the living. The air grew thick with incense and anticipation. Just as Cornelius raised his arms to begin the final incantation, a cold wind swept through the chamber, extinguishing the candles and plunging them into darkness. In that moment of blackness, none of them could have foreseen the true consequences of their morbid curiosity, nor the terrible price they would pay for meddling with forces beyond their comprehension. As dawn broke over Morbus Island, Cornelius Wraith awoke with a start, his mind reeling from the events of the previous night. The ritual had not gone as planned. Instead of harnessing the power of the island's departed souls, he felt different. His senses seemed sharper, his body lighter, as if he were somehow less tethered to the physical world. Beside him, Ophelia Whisperwind stirred, her usually serene face contorted with uncharacteristic confusion. Ivy Silverthorn was nowhere to be seen. As Cornelius struggled to his feet, he caught a glimpse of his reflection in a shattered mirror and froze. The face staring back at him was not his own, but that of a gaunt, ancient being with eyes that held centuries of suffering. Panic rising in his throat, Cornelius stumbled out of the morgue and into the misty grounds of the island. The landscape seemed to have shifted overnight. The dilapidated buildings now exuded an aura of malevolent sentience and shadows moved in ways that defied natural law. As he wandered, calling out for Ivy, he began to encounter other island inhabitants, shambling forms that were neither fully dead nor truly alive. These creatures regarded him with a mixture of fear and reverence, backing away as he approached. It dawned on Cornelius that they saw him not as himself, but as the powerful undead entity he had inadvertently switched places with during the ritual. Meanwhile, Ophelia had set out on her own search, her heightened spiritual sensitivity 
allowing her to perceive the island's true nature. She discovered that Morbus was not merely a place, but a living entity, fed by centuries of death and suffering. The souls of those who had perished here were bound to the island, their collective agony fueling its malevolent consciousness. As she delved deeper into this revelation, Ophelia found herself drawn to the island's dark allure, her own sanity beginning to fray at the edges. The morbid curiosity that had brought them to this place was now threatening to consume her. As the day wore on, Cornelius and Ophelia's paths diverged further. Cornelius, grappling with his new form and the terrible knowledge it contained, sought a way to reverse the transformation. He delved into the deepest recesses of the island's structures, uncovering ancient texts and artifacts that hinted at the true nature of necromancy, not as a means of controlling death, but as a way for the dead to perpetuate their existence through the living. Each discovery pulled him further from his humanity and deeper into the role of the ancient undead being he had become. It was Ivy who finally broke the island's hold, emerging from a hidden underground chamber with vital information. She had spent the night communing with the more benevolent spirits trapped on the island, learning of a ritual that could potentially undo the damage they had wrought. But time was of the essence. With each passing hour, the boundary between Cornelius and the undead entity blurred, and Ophelia slipped further into the island's madness. As night fell once again, the trio reunited, each irrevocably changed by their experiences. They knew that the coming ritual would be their only chance to escape the island's clutches, but the price of failure would be higher than they could imagine. The trio converged in the heart of the island, a vast underground cavern that pulsed with an otherworldly energy. Cornelius, now more ancient being than man, led the way, his newfound knowledge guiding them through twisting passages lined with phosphorescent fungi and whispering shadows. Ophelia followed, her eyes wild with the island's influence, muttering incantations that seemed to ripple through the very air. Ivy brought up the rear, clutching a bundle of herbs and a scroll containing the ritual that was their last hope. The cavern's ceiling arched high above them, dotted with stalactites that looked unsettlingly like grasping fingers reaching down towards them. At the centre of the cavern stood an ancient altar, its surface carved with intricate symbols that seemed to shift and change when viewed from different angles. As they approached, the whispers that had been haunting the island crescendoed into a cacophony of voices pleading, threatening and bargaining. Cornelius felt the entity within him stir, its centuries of existence rebelling against the prospect of being cast out. He gritted his teeth, fighting to maintain control of his own mind and body. Ophelia swayed on her feet, torn between her loyalty to her companions and the seductive call of the island's dark power. Ivy began the ritual, her voice strong and clear as she recited words in a language older than time itself. As she spoke, the air around them thickened, becoming almost liquid in its density. Ghostly forms began to materialize, the souls of those who had died on the island, trapped for so long. They swirled around the trio, their faces contorted in anguish and hope. Cornelius felt a tugging sensation, as if his very essence was being pulled in two directions. He locked eyes with Ophelia, seeing his own internal struggle mirrored in her gaze. The entity within him raged, its power threatening to overwhelm him completely. As the ritual reached its climax, the cavern itself seemed to come alive. The ground trembled and cracks appeared in the walls, oozing a viscous black substance that moved with unnatural purpose. The island was fighting back, unwilling to relinquish its hold on the souls it had claimed. Ivy's voice rose to a shout, competing with the howling of the trapped spirits and the rumbling of the earth. Cornelius felt himself being torn apart, the line between his own identity and that of the ancient being blurring beyond recognition. In a moment of clarity, he realised that the only way to complete the ritual was to willingly let go, to sacrifice his own existence to undo the damage they had caused. With a roar that shook the very foundations of the island, Cornelius embraced the entity within him, then forcefully projected it outward. 
The cavern exploded with light, blinding in its intensity. Ophelia screamed, the sound piercing through the chaos as the island's influence was ripped from her mind. Ivy's voice reached a fever pitch, the final words of the ritual echoing with power. For a moment that seemed to stretch into eternity, everything hung in perfect, terrible balance. Then, with a sound like the tearing of reality itself, the light imploded, sucking the swirling spirits, the entity, and the very essence of the island into a singularity of energy. As suddenly as it had begun, it was over. The three companions collapsed to the cavern floor, the silence as deafening as the chaos had been moments before. In the aftermath of the cataclysmic ritual, Cornelius, Ophelia and Ivy lay motionless on the cavern floor, the silence broken only by their ragged breathing. Slowly consciousness returned, bringing with it a flood of sensations and memories. Cornelius stirred first, his body aching as if he had aged decades in mere moments. As he pushed himself up, he caught sight of his reflection in a pool of water. His own face stared back at him, haggard but unmistakably human. The ancient entity was gone, banished along with the island's malevolent force. A mix of relief and loss washed over him, the vast knowledge he had briefly possessed now slipping away like sand through an hourglass. Ophelia awoke next, her mind clear for the first time since they had arrived on the island. The whispers that had plagued her were silent, replaced by a profound emptiness that was both liberating and terrifying. She looked at her companions with new eyes, free from the island's corrupting influence. The morbid curiosity that had driven her to this point now seemed hollow, replaced by a deep-seated fear of the forces they had tampered with. Ivy was the last to rise, her body trembling from the exertion of the ritual. The tome she had relied on so heavily crumbled to dust in her hands, its purpose fulfilled and its power spent. As they made their way out of the cavern, they found Morbus Island transformed. The oppressive atmosphere had lifted and the mist that had shrouded the landscape had dissipated. The decrepit building stood silent, no longer exuding an aura of malevolence. They walked through the grounds, witnessing the island's metamorphosis. Where before there had been an overwhelming sense of suffering and trapped souls, now there was only the hollow emptiness of a truly abandoned place. The trio realised that their actions had not only freed themselves, but had also released countless spirits from their centuries-long imprisonment. Reaching the shore where their boat was moored, they paused to look back at the island. The weight of their experiences hung heavy between them, unspoken questions and regrets lingering in the air. Cornelius, once driven by his ambition to master death, now felt humbled by the forces he had encountered. Ophelia's ethereal connection to the spirit world had been irrevocably altered, leaving her grappling with a newfound sense of mortality. Ivy, whose knowledge had been their lifeline, was left questioning the wisdom of pursuing such dangerous secrets. As they prepared to leave Morbus Island behind, each of them knew they were departing as changed individuals, their perspectives on life, death, and the fragile boundary between irrevocably shifted. As they sailed away, the island seemed to recede more quickly than it should have, as if eager to fade from both sight and memory. The trio sat in contemplative silence, each lost in their own thoughts. The boat's wake stretched behind them, erasing their path back to Morbus Island, symbolically cutting ties with the horrors they had faced. Yet as the mainland approached, a new anxiety began to set in. They had survived their ordeal, but at what cost? And how could they possibly return to their normal lives carrying the burden of their experiences? The approaching shoreline represented not just a return to civilization, but a daunting challenge to live with the knowledge of what lurks beyond the veil and the terrible responsibility that comes with such awareness. Weeks after their return from Morbus Island, Cornelius Wraith found himself unable to shake the lingering effects of their harrowing experience. He had resumed his life as a respected scholar of the occult, but his nights were plagued by vivid dreams of the island and the ancient being he had briefly become. One particularly restless evening, as he pored over his old texts seeking answers, Cornelius felt a sudden, 
inexplicable pull. The sensation was familiar, disturbingly so. With mounting horror, he realised it was the same feeling he had experienced during the ritual on the island. Before he could react, the world around him blurred and shifted. When Cornelius' vision cleared, he found himself standing in a vast, otherworldly realm. The landscape was a nightmarish blend of familiar and alien elements, as if reality itself was in flux. With a jolt of terror, he understood what had happened. The ritual hadn't just separated him from the ancient undead being, it had switched their places entirely. He was now trapped in the entity's realm, while it roamed free in his world, wearing his face and living his life. Panic surged through him as he contemplated the implications of this terrible twist of fate. Back in the mortal world, the entity now inhabiting Cornelius's body reveled in its newfound freedom. Centuries of existence had given it unparalleled knowledge of necromancy and the dark arts, which it now wielded with Cornelius's mortal hands. It reached out to Ophelia and Ivy, its mannerisms a near-perfect imitation of their friend. But as they reunited, both women sensed something amiss. Ophelia's heightened spiritual awareness, though altered by their ordeal, picked up on subtle inconsistencies. Ivy, with her keen analytical mind, noticed discrepancies in Cornelius's knowledge and behavior. As the entity settled into Cornelius's life, its true nature began to seep through the cracks of its carefully constructed facade. Strange occurrences plagued the city. Graves were found disturbed, people reported seeing deceased loved ones, and an oppressive atmosphere reminiscent of Morbus Island began to permeate the area. Ophelia and Ivy, their suspicions growing, started to investigate. They delved into ancient texts, seeking a way to unveil the truth and potentially rescue the real Cornelius, wherever he might be. The story culminates in a desperate race against time. Cornelius, trapped in the otherworldly realm, struggles to find a way to communicate with his friends, using every scrap of knowledge he gained during his brief merger with the entity. Meanwhile, Ophelia and Ivy work tirelessly to uncover the truth and confront the imposter wearing their friend's face. As the entity's plans for the mortal world unfold, bringing it ever closer to the brink of chaos, the stage is set for a final confrontation. The fate of not just Cornelius, but potentially the entire world, hangs in the balance, hinging on whether the lessons learned on Morbus Island will be enough to outwit an ancient malevolent force that has waited centuries for this opportunity.